I got I got into wrestling right before I got locked up. Right before I got heavy, heavy into opiates. A bunch of dudes where I'm from, we all we were like wrestling growing up, so we started wrestling. And uh I ended up robbing one of the guys, like I stole some stupid out of his house, like a, a TV stand or something. All of them hated me, man. I understand why, man. They didn't want me to around. Why would they want me around if I'm stealing off of them? Right. I got locked up and I got out and I didn't reach out to none of them for a while. And I guess they seen I was doing the right thing. And one of them started, the guy actually stole off of, reached out to me and he was like, I'm glad to see you're doing well, man. I was like, you're my best friend. I, I didn't want to like see you die. He was like, that's kind of one of the biggest reasons I kind of like, separated myself. I was afraid to get a call saying you're dead. He just said he didn't want to see me die. So what's your wrestling name? <laughs> Dude, it's the funniest thing ever. It's Roman 5-0. I'm like a dirty cop. DJ, what's up, bro? What's up? Yeah, man. So uh, you reached out to me on Instagram. I guess you saw a couple of the reels and stuff, right? Yeah, like what you were doing. Hell yeah, that's what's up. And you've been clean for a while. Uh, two years, a little over two years. December, I picked up a two-year chip. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, right. I've seen the pictures all over Instagram of your chips. So introduce yourself, man. Tell us like where you, who you are, how old are you, where are you from? Uh, DJ Southerly. I'm 31 from down near Harrisonburg, Virginia, a little town called Broadway okay. out in the sticks. Ain't much going on down there. Though. So that's down near the uh, campus, though, right in their school right yep, there? James, James Madison. Madison. Right, so I was locked up in Harrisonburg for a while. Oh, yeah, and, I've been uh, down there. <laughs> right, so the, the big jail, that the, the one that's like four or five stories? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Right, it's like right near Main Street. Crazy, right? Yes, and you can see everything out the windows. Yeah. And uh, the uh, basketball court's on the roof, right? Right. Yeah, I thought that was crazy. You got a big cage over it. Never been in a place like that before. Yeah. Yeah. So, what was your uh, like? What was your drug of choice, man? Tell us what you liked uh, using. When did you start using? I was sixteen. Got into smoking weed. Um, slowly took off like Xanax, Klonopin. Oh man. Yeah, the rough stuff. And uh, then I met a girl. I was about twenty, twenty-one. We started on the opiate. Started on pain pills, Dilatas, whatever it was. Okay. Then uh, we broke up three or four, maybe three years later. And then that the meth. The meth is really what to grasp my ass. You've done the rounds then, bro. I did, how, I did it all. The trash can. are you? 31. 31. Okay, I wouldn't take you for 31. Yeah, a lot of people say that. I put you that. about five years younger at least. Thank at you. At least. Yeah, right? I know. I feel that. <laughs> I feel that. Uh, so Xanax and stuff early. Like, where are you getting your drugs? Where are you getting Xanax and stuff at 17? Oh, we had the school down there. It was like a, a trade school. And like you, it is for one of our like credits for one of our classes, and we get to go down there half the day and like learn a, a trade, like carpentry, masonry, whatever it was. And there's a boy in my class, and he he brought Claude up in it one day, and he's like, "Try this out," because he was always happy. I was like, "Well, I want to be happy like you." He was always talking to the girls and stuff. Okay. So uh, I tried some of those, and then it just devoured me. So he had that drunk confidence from it, right? That Absolutely, kind of, that you yeah. Didn't care. Did you feel the same way from the Oh, Xanax? yeah, yeah. I remember I got on the school bus later that day, and uh, this girl I liked, She, uh, I never talked to her. I talked to her that day, though. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Been wanting to talk to her yeah, for years. Yeah, I got her phone number. A little, little bit of, I just said, I've been wanting to talk to you. Yeah. How many did you take? Just one Klodopin? Just one? I gave you that I first little buzz? They were one milligrams. They're like okay. the little green ones. Right. And But it was just enough to make you like just it. Just enough. It's what I've been missing in my life, I thought. That's what you thought it was, huh? Yeah. Still in school. Still in school. Damn, man. That's pretty early, right? Yeah. So did you finish school? Yeah, well, I got my GED. Okay, I repeated too. the ninth grade, I think, three or four times. On my second trip, second time back, I said, I'm done. I yeah. just left, so yeah, I feel I think that. 1920, I finally, I was like, look, I was like, I'm getting my GED or I'm just not coming back. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually had a problem with the, the principal down there in our school. He didn't want nobody to go get a GED because it looked like the like failure rate was worse off for the school. Oh, okay. So uh, I'm, I had to just go do it by myself. He wouldn't let me do it through the school. All right. So you're using up to this point. You're getting out of school. Right. Right. You're going to get in your GED. You're doing your own thing. Right. Right. Like what starts happening then? Are you still at home? Did you move out? Yeah, like I was at home until probably about 20. Um, I met some friends down there. They were kind of in the same, the same boat as I was. They were they liked to party, you mm -hmm. know. They were hanging out. Birds of a feather, right? Birds of a feather flock together, exactly. Uh, and like they were a little bit older, and man, and the one of the guys were actually my cousin. Mm -hmm. It was like my second cousin or whatever. And so I started hanging out with them because all my other friends were were in school still, and I'm out of school, just chilling. Right. Well, you got nobody to hang out no, with. No, nobody to school. hang out with. So, well, these guys were, you know, they got into smoking weed and 
doing the pain pills and stuff. Yeah. So that was like uh, pretty cool to me. You know how it is when you're younger and you're going right. to hang out with the older kids. Right. So yeah. we're talking about 10, 12 years ago. So what? 2014, right? 2012. Around 12. Okay. 2012, 2012, 2014. So this is before fentanyl and everything, right? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So that's a, that's like Xanax, Klonopin, and then opiates. You yeah. Op so what kind of opiates? Pain pills. Uh roxy 30s so you started straight with roxy you didn't even start with viking and yeah a i remember this guy i knew uh he came over to my cousin's house and he had a roxy 30 and we did it and i got sick as a dog mm -hmm. but like there was like 20 minutes before i was sick i felt real great good. yeah i felt great absolutely great and it was just so you threw up got threw sick. up i got sick as a, a dog okay. but they were like all the people there were like applauded me they're like dude he's really holding it together right right and i'm just on the couch like oh <laughs> my god so after you threw up how did you feel then i think i just went to sleep yeah they probably nodded on out right on out right on yeah. the couch uh, there was a girl there she was older than me and uh it was one of the the guy that brought the pills over it was his girlfriend and she was like a big pill head. Uh -huh. We called her a uh, reptar because she would like have these little T Rex arms <laughs> when she'd get all high. And uh, she, uh, dude, they were like, "Well, look at her. She's a big pill head." And this kid right here, he's holding it together pretty well. And they were just making fun. And of that her. was the first time you ever did a Roxy. The first time I ever did a Roxy. Yeah, man, that's a lot of milligrams for your first try. Yeah, yeah. But you hung in there, according to these people. That's awesome. Uh, so how did that? Uh, let's rewind a little bit to your childhood. How did you come up? Like good parents, bad parents, Dude, middle class, great upper class? Parents. Okay. Uh, it's kind of weird. I mean, you know, like I'm a, I'm an only child. My parents were young, like 18, 19 when I was born. Okay. So they never really had like the party kind of childhood. So they just knew work. And uh, they let me get whatever I wanted. Only child gets spoiled to death. Oh, spoiled to death. I feel I'm, that. I'm a too. mama's boy. Me too, bro. And I love I'll take care of my mama until today she's gone, bro. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you're not going to stand in the way of that. Nobody uh -huh. is. So I feel that too. Do you think they helped you to get high? Like, did they stop you when you when they started finding out? or They, they knew I, like, smoked weed. But I don't – they really didn't know about the, the pills and stuff. Because mm -hmm. I, I would leave. They were okay. like, well, you're 18 now. You can just go. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do, you're an adult. So I kind of, like, I would get a job and kind of hold a job down for, like, a month or two. And they'd still think I was, like, going to work and stuff. But I wouldn't be at work. I'd just be getting you high with my friends. Leaving, right? Yeah. How are you getting money to get high? Uh, However, I just hung out with the older kids. They always had money. They were selling drugs, mm -hmm. selling weed, selling, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it was, mushrooms, cocaine, whatever they needed to do. And I would just chill with them. I would make them laugh, so they needed that. Right, okay. So you get onto the opiates, and now that you're doing opiates, are you still doing all the other stuff too? Are you still doing Xanax with it? Or oh or yeah, the Xanax. It? Uh, it was the Xanax. It was I would try uppers as a kid, man, but like they weren't my thing. Right, they would make me too anxious, make me like nervous. Uppers like what? Like Adderall. Okay. Cocaine, whatever okay. it was. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we we got in the Xanax and the pain pills, and it was like. The greatest combination. When you ever. mix those two, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why people die. Yeah. Those are the ones that Absolutely. kill. That's the one that kills you because those two together slow your heart rate and everything down so low that, you know, just pain pills without fentanyl. But those two things right there are definitely known for many overdoses. Yeah. Like looking back now, I'm like, how did I not die? Bro, me too. Yeah. Me I'm too. Looking, but, but like, like you said, we didn't really have fentanyl then. No, we didn't. And I think I got smart enough to stop. I overdosed on fentanyl one time and that was it. I've never fucking went yeah. back. Uh, some people keep going back. But yeah, we were searching for that crazy buzz that came with those two mixtures, right? And like that was the best buzz. Like I, sometimes I didn't even want to use the Lauded unless I had some Klonopin or something, you know? Right. Just because it, it made the buzz that much better. The fentanyl we had then was like came in the little patches you got from the doctor. You know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? Like yeah. the little gel patches? I know exactly what you're talking about. All right, so yeah, man. Uh, how long did that last? Like, how long were you using uh, the opiates and all that stuff? You the started opiates. This... I mean, for real, they about five years. Okay, probably a good five solid years of the opiates. So you're understanding the withdrawals, dude. I didn't understand the withdrawals. I tell a lot of people this: like, you don't understand how addicted you are to opiates mm -hmm. until you don't have them. Yeah, and then withdrawals hit. But it's like, dude, that that was the most miserable shit i've ever dealt with in my life right and then it's like i met a girl when we were doing opiates 
And I didn't realize how miserable the withdrawals were until you have somebody else in your ear every single day telling you about how bad they are. Right, that negativity. Yeah. Because, I mean, when I was by myself, I could go walk on a walk or go do whatever it is. I didn't have to ha worry about somebody else's addiction. Right, on top of yours. Yeah. Her yeah. screaming in another room or whatever it was. So if you could go back to yourself and, like, let's just say you could go back and talk to yourself then before you did that first Roxy. But you kind of knew you was going to like it. Would you do it? What would you tell other people that are, you know, have that option? Like, I've never used Roxy's before in my life. What are you going to tell me? Uh, don't do it. Why not? There's, I mean, there's other pain reasons. I mean, ways to uh, make your pain go away. Okay. And it's like, that. that isn't the way to do it. Seems cool on paper, but it's going to ruin your life, man. Absolutely ruin your life. I mean, so I've seen some people do one Roxy, never again. People aren't built like us. A lot of people aren't built like us where they, like I said, I got sick off that first pill. And I just still liked it. Well, I mean, for what reason? Well, why I wanted it to throw up? I don't know. But like I said, the, you had 20 minutes prior to that where it was like the absolute best feeling of my life. Mm -hmm. But it would tell me to not do that 20 minutes in order to miss out yeah. on the next five years. Yeah. Because there's a lot of, a lot of like, pain man that came with that that five years it was yeah. every day i mean i didn't have i have nothing i worked after a while i kind of did keep a job but like it was like i'd work six months at one job and get another job and then work six months there i have nothing to show from that mm -hmm. i don't have no vehicles from mm -hmm. that from that era of my life i have no like houses no credit i didn't build a credit up i can tell you how high i got that's about it right yeah wasted a bunch of money yeah, on got, hurting yourself. Yeah, got ripped off, ripped people off. It was right. just a miserable time. So, what was like the lowest point for you? Uh, the lowest point wasn't the opiates; it was the meth. Okay, so let's get into that. How meth. did that start? Like, how do you? Number one, you don't like uppers, right? You already know right, that. Right. You've been doing downers all these years, and now you decide to try meth. Well, how? Uh, I met this. Like I said, I met that girl doing opiates. We were together for three or four years, and uh, we broke up. And I was like, I'm fucking tired. I can get finally get rid of these opiates. Well, I just kind of substituted it with the meth. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went over to these people's house, and it was like we were smoking, chilling. And I was like, when we broke up, it kind of it kind of like messed me up pretty bad. So I was around people. I just needed company. And like we were just up high all night, three or four days at a time. So it was kind of cool. I didn't want to leave other people's side because I was kind of I had a codependent relationship with this girl. Okay. And, so uh, once you separate yourself from her, you had to attach yourself to yeah, something Yeah, yeah, other people, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So that took off, man. And it was like, that is, I don't know, man. Like, opiates and stuff, there's some, like, nasty people. But, like, where I'm from in Harrisonburg, down that area, that meth is, like, taking over. I mean, absolutely taking over. Like, here in Winchester, a lot of people are like, yeah, we, I was addicted to crack. And I'm like, crack hasn't been a thing down there in years, mm -hmm. a long time. It definitely seems like the meth and the fentanyl is taking over most of the drugs on the street. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's a lot cheaper. Meth is way cheaper than right than cocaine or crack, whatever it is. Yeah. Same with fentanyl. Mm-hmm. Just... Yeah, I've seen videos of cats getting you know fentanyl pills six bucks a piece and shit. Yeah. Six ten bucks, and that's four highs for them. Yeah. Like you're getting high for two fifty a time, bro. Yeah, I remember when them fentanyl pills first came. It was right towards the end of my opiate addiction, and uh. I did it. The guy was like, I got a 30. I was like, all right, cool. I mean, you know how it is when you're sick. You kind of pay whatever you can and right. get your fix. He was like, I'll, do, I'll sell it to you for 40. Did they tell you it was pressed? No, didn't tell me. He okay. didn't know. Okay, so he, he got, just, he, he's selling it as a Roxy 30. Yeah, he had He a, thinks it's a Roxy yeah. 30, but it's really fitting all. He had a big bag of them, like a, like a couple thousand of them. And like, I should have thought then, like, how did he get this many pain pills? He doesn't know a doctor. Uh -huh. He works at a, a, a poultry plant. You know, uh -huh. what does he do? But uh, he's apparently he was getting them off the dark web, and uh, he looked got just like a Roxy, same markings looked, and just, everything. I remember when I crushed it up that day; it was really hard, and I couldn't crush it. I absolutely couldn't crush. It. I tried and I tried and I tried. And it was a little inbox Roxy, and the like the M on it fell, kind of fell off. Like it was like a, the coating fell off of it. I was like, you weird, know how, right off yeah, top. Different. After you did something a thousand yes. times, you know when something's absolutely. not right right about it. So uh, I did that. And, like, me and my ex split a pill. Usually we could do, like, two or three pills each. And uh, we split that pill, and she, I looked over, and she was eating a bowl of cereal, and she was knotted out in her cereal with her face in it. And I started throwing up. 
And I was sick. I was like, what the hmm. fuck is going on with me right now? Right. But but still, when you got the initial buzz, there was nothing that told you. To, how are you doing it? You're snorting it? I was sniffing it. it. Yeah. Right. So as soon as you snorted it, it wasn't different in your nose. It wasn't a telltale, holy shit, that's not the same. Other than the M falling off, but there was no other type of signs? I can't really tell. I have a deviated septum, so when I sniff it, it goes straight down my, oh, okay. straight down my throat. Okay, so there's not a lot of burning and shit. Nah, I just, it's gone. Okay, so how, did you ever get past the uh, smoking and snorting into shooting? Did you ever get into needles? Yeah, I got into needles. No, not with the opiates. Okay. Never with the meth. Never with the opiates, but with the meth. Yeah, okay. I was scared of the opiates, man. I thought, like, you know how it is with the, that that drug addict mentality. You're like, well, I only see people shoot it up, they overdose. Mm -hmm. You know, I smoked, uh, I smoked a lot of fentanyl and stuff. Like, once I found out what fentanyl was, when, when I got that pill, it's kind of like I wanted it. Okay. Yeah. Because it got you higher. Yeah, it got me higher. It was easier. It was quicker. It was it was cheaper. And just like, why, why? If I needed three regular Roxy's to get high, I can take one of these pills. Okay, so that was Roxy's, that was Roxy's to fentanyl. Yeah. Okay, and then the meth? Yeah, then the meth. So then the meth is at the end of your addiction? Is this your bottom? Yeah, that's my bottom. That was like a good seven-year run. No shit. Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah, that was rough. And smoking and snorting that shit all shooting the time. It. Shooting it all the yeah, time. Every that. day. Every well, day. Well, you don't really need it every I would, day, right? I would get locked up, and then I would be, like, in jail. Like, the first time I got locked up was, like, 2020, right? At the all pandemic. Right. For what? Uh, uh, possession. Okay. Of meth. Of meth. Okay. I got locked up then, and it was, like, for three or four months, and I got sobered up. And you know how it is when you're in there. You're like, I ain't never touching that shit. I ain't never going to go through that ever again. Yeah, yeah, then you get out, and you're like, well, I want to go over here to whoever's house and see how they're doing. Right, it's, my meth friend. You know how they're still doing the same right. damn thing. So how about DTs? How about the detox from meth? So uh, you sleep. You, okay. You sleep. I remember when I was I started shooting it up, it, like my end of my fingertips would hurt real bad. It was weird. I don't know if it was like just my weird. senses kind of coming back and like I can touch. Okay. And like what it was, but I felt like I felt like my my teeth would hurt. I would sleep. I'd get pissed off. I'd get groggy. How was the longest you ever stayed up on meth? Eleven days. Eleven days. Yeah. I think that's the uh, most I've heard yet. I heard nine the other. Yeah, I stayed up eleven. That was at the end of the, like. So, just take me through that. Like the first couple days. Okay, so you slept. You wake up. Now I'm getting ready to do an eleven day run. Is that a plan? No, no. Uh, that was right when I got. I, I told you I got locked up. It was the first time I got high after that, so I did. My tolerance was real low, and uh, I got I got high, man. And it was like, all right, cool. Day three, I'm like, wish I could go to sleep, but I'm still feeling good, not groggy. You know, day four or five rolls around, I'm going to work every day at this point. Uh huh. And uh, it was like before you know it, it was like I I kind of blinked, and I came to, and it was like day eleven, and I was like, I gotta get sleep, man. I gotta get sleep. No shit. So you're not like seeing things? Yeah, yeah. Day day ten and eleven. I was working at an applesauce factory down in uh Mount Jackson. Day ten and eleven, I would like make the applesauce. I was dumping fifty pound bags of sugar in this applesauce, right? And I thought by eleven I was I was working at a potato chip factory dumping potatoes in this fucking thing. Uh, dude, that was absolutely out of my mind. Brain just goes crazy. Uh, dude, it was it was that was the only time I really like hallucinated off that stuff. Okay, but it was a, and your mind's tricking you into thinking it's potatoes as well as you seeing potatoes. Dude, I was I don't even remember what I was. It was kind of like I was in. It was like a movie, like an old time movie reel, where it was like you just like showing up in pictures. Okay, and it's like that's how little it, flippers. Though, yeah, yeah, little, little flippers with the little tracks on the side. Yeah, that's they had me awesome. training a guy at work and like. I don't know how he, he got successful at what he did because I didn't trade him right. <laughs> I don't know how the applesauce tasted that day because I didn't do I didn't do a good job. Y'all got any fucked up applesauce out there? It might have been from you. Yeah, it might have been from me. <laughs> but it was a simple thing, you know. <laughs> oh man. That's crazy, bro. I, I never did like to stay up like that. Like I, I had to sleep. So, well, the yeah, thing I never was, got, I never got into the meth, but that, it's just amazing to me that like seven, eleven, ten days. Fuck, yeah. man, it's crazy. Yeah, it I can't even imagine what I would be doing with myself for ten days straight with no sleep. Well, it was like I would work twelve hours a day, and then I would want to go hang out with people afterwards. Okay, like my code, I have a really bad codependency problem. Okay, you know, being in, like I said, being an only child and like having my mom, I mean, damn near up my ass twenty four seven. Uh huh. 
up until I'm like 19, 20. Then it's kind of like I depended on other people to, you know, for that. Right. I got you. Yeah, man. So that's a crazy trip, though. Uh, so the meth starts out. Obviously, you're using the meth. You're going to work on it every day. So right. you're kind of sustaining, right? Right. How long does that last? Uh, till I quit. I mean, I quit my job to sell drugs. I thought that was like, mm -hmm. I was doing them both at first. And then I was like, well, the, the, this work is getting in the way of my drug dealing. Mm -hmm. So that took off for a while. People are calling you while you're at work and you're like, yo, I could be making this. But instead, I'm here making $4 an hour. Right, right. Whatever. And uh, that took off, and it was like, that was just like the absolute most awful thing ever, mm -hmm. that drug deal. I couldn't. So I, I got out of that, and then it's like the money just wasn't there. I couldn't get a job after that because there, there's not many places down there to work. You have like five major places to work, like Walmart, a poultry plant, and the applesauce place, and maybe another poultry plant. And uh, and a construction company. There's like nothing down there for real because you got only thing you really have is James Madison University. Mm -hmm. Other that than, creates most of the economy. That yeah, it creates most of the economy. Unless you want to work in McDonald's or something, and right, that doesn't pay enough. Right. So uh, yeah, I got back into the drug dealing again, man, and it was like within a week I got locked back up, and that was for my longest <sighs> my longest time. Okay, how long was that? A little over a year. All right, for another distribution. No, no distros of possessions. Okay. I had it all in one bag. I got lucky. They could have got me for intent. So you were distributing, but since it was all in one, you just got got off easier. Yeah. It was yeah. all in one bag, so they gave me another possession. But it was my third possession of methamphetamine. Uh -huh. I've had seven possessions total. Two of for, meth? No, uh, three of meth, two, one of Xanax, one of, believe it or not, tra tramadol. Uh -huh. Like, what the fuck is a tramadol? Uh -huh. And then two of marijuana, which is... Retarded, and that's all the charges you've had. No yeah. other charges other than possession charges. Uh, I had p probation, right? Other than that, so a couple of violations, but no thefts, no robberies. No, no... Uh, I had like when I was a kid some petty theft, mm -hmm. stealing from like a business, or right? Something. But it wasn't your thing, obviously. You would rather no. buy and sell than, yeah, have yeah. To yeah. Go steal. Well, I mean, like I said, man, I had my parents. I'm not trying to say like they kind of enabled me, but they kind of enabled me. Well, here's the thing about that, too, is how much education did they have towards drugs and what you were doing? Not a lot. That's why they enabled you. Yeah. That's what this is about. It's about the education we can give people so they don't. Right. So they know. So they can look for the signs and symptoms in order to right. help us. And it's like, uh, I don't think they, I mean, as a parent, man, like I, I, have, I have kids I don't like if they're doing bad and somebody comes to you and you're like, yeah, your kids are, are fucking up over here. You're going to take up for them no matter what. Yes. And you don't, you're not going to give them no shit about it. Like you're like, you can just give them the benefit of the doubt because you raise them and you don't want to feel like a failure. Right. Like your kids are like this. Right. But see, the biggest thing about it too is in order to understand what we're doing wrong, we have to identify the mistake we're making. Right. Right. Sometimes that's a mistake is thinking that we're perfect and our kids are perfect. Right. And that person that, how dare they say anything about my kids. Yeah. Right. Sometimes we've got to humble ourselves and look from that point of view. Say, what's he seeing? What's he saying? Is that true? Is it total yeah. bullshit? I mean, because the person they know is, is a, you know, if they're at home and they're just the sweetest little kid ever. Mm hmm. That's all they see. They mm -hmm. don't see when you go, you're going out to school and taking Xanax and then coming home and, oh, I've had a long day at school. I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> yeah. They don't think anything <laughs> yeah, about that. Yeah, you're right, man, especially when they've seen it your whole life. You're right. Uh, I have a couple of – I have a friend of mine that I've known since 99, and he's like 46 now, and his parents still enable him. Yeah. And they've never put consequences on him, bro, never. And he's 45, living at home with no job, has overdosed two or three times in the last two years. And that's it, it doesn't keep, help. You have to teach. Happening. You have to teach your kids to get out of the house. You have to teach your kids to stand on their own. Yeah, you just have to. Not saying anything bad against your parents or anything, but you know what I'm saying. It's just like I feel like that's something we're falling short of. Yeah, <laughs> especially when it comes to the education about stuff like this, because these people are, uh, you know, church going people or whatever and then their little daughter gets introduced to some guy she falls head over heels he introduces her to dope and now this christian family don't even know what dope is yeah so if we can educate them a little bit right if we can let them know man don't let your daughter get wrapped up with that because if you see or hear these things these are red flags yeah right i mean i understand though man it's like they would ask me they're like what's wrong with you mm -hmm. and i'm like 
you know, grow. I'm just growing, going through some growing pain. You lied. Yeah, you lied. That's what we do. You, you deceive them. Yes. I grew up with um, like my mom's sister, man. Both her sisters, drug addicts, mm-hmm. straight pill heads. Okay, so she knew about pill heads. She with- knew what they were, and I knew like I knew she knew. So it's like I just try not to act like them. Okay. You Good know? point. I feel bad right now. My mom's going through it because her one sister's like dying. She's, she's her liver shut down too mm-hmm. much, too many Roxies or whatever, whatever the stuff with the Tylenol and the uh, yeah. hydrocodone. I mean, she's I'll tear you up, dude. It's it's she's like a hundred pounds. So what happened to Matthew Perry? Yeah, yeah. Hydrocodone tore his insides out, like because it stays in there. Yeah. So yeah, she's been doing it for a long time, man. That's tough. Is yeah. she still doing them? Absolutely. And it's so hard to get them off, isn't it? Would yeah. she cure if she got off of them? Probably not. Really, that's what the doctor it's, said. It's towards the end where, mm-hmm. I mean, she's not herself. It's sad, man. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is, and it's getting worse. Uh, I just got a text yesterday, bro, about another death yesterday right here you know, in Winchester. Yeah. The guy a, finds his daughter dead in the bedroom. I had a buddy that passed away like three or four weeks ago. Me too. Yeah. Like four weeks ago. Like, if we sit here and added them up, we could probably find one a day within 100 miles of here. I found Sometimes uh, more. Since I'm moving up here to Winchester and get in the recovery community, I've had more people overdose and die that I've known hmm. than my whole life, probably. Relapses. Relapses. So people you're meeting in the program yeah. are going back out and dying. Yep. yep. How does that make you feel? Man, it's like I try to help a lot of people. I try to go out here and educate these people because that's like, that's what you do. You pass the message on, man. And it's like, it's sad when you see a lot of people like, like you try to help them out. Like I've sponsored guys and uh, you could, when they're just not getting it, mm-hmm. they don't want to take suggestions. They don't want to do what they need to do. And it's like, it's like, Hey, uh, so your whole life you've been struggling over this lady. You've been, you've been dating her for 10 years. Y'all were using together. Why do you want to keep going back to her? man? just take a year off. To chill out a little bit, you know, and then it's like they don't want to listen, man. And within an, either either dead, or they're back in prison within a year. Yeah, man, it's definitely a sad thing. So right there, you got emotion and addiction, yeah, mixed up in one place. Yep. Right. So all your love for this person's there that you're using with, and both of them are nothing but a trap. Yeah. Yeah, that's hard to separate yourself from. My thing too, man. You you tell like. I don't know. I don't know how what you, what you've done, but like I had to go to meetings. The meetings helped out a lot. So I try to tell guys like, "Hey, man, hit up these meetings. You know, go find people that you're like, and go make friends and stuff." And they're like, mm-hmm. oh, "I don't need that shit. I'm. I know I'm done." When I, that's the famous line I hear every mm-hmm. time before they go, they violate probation. I know when I'm done and I'll be done. So it's like, all right, cool. So if you don't need them, I ain't gonna keep fighting you for it. You know what's good. You know. You know where the the answer is. Right, but you just want to shake them. Yeah. Don't you? You just want to grab them by the throat and be like, "Yeah." I'm trying to help you dumbass yeah. don't you no, yeah we can't we can't be helped until we want to be helped man yep. how many people try to grab a hold of you uh a lot so try to put yourself in that yeah position, no, i get it now but don't stop reaching out yeah absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's one thing you can't do you can't get discouraged to the point of saying you know what fuck that guy i'm not gonna text yeah. him anymore no i still call my boy i still call him he don't even have a phone right now i have to call his dad yeah to talk to him i text his dad hey how's he doing can i talk to him have him call me it's still a pain in my ass, but I just want to see, bro, I'm here for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. One day he's hopefully going to get it or he's going to die. And if yep. he dies, oh, it's going to fucking kill me. Yeah, I have a friend from back home, man. He was like my little brother. And I love the dude. And uh, he moved up here after he got out of prison. And he's like trying to do the right thing, man. But it's like he stopped going to meetings. He's falling back. Mm-hmm. He won't answer calls. He won't answer texts. I, like, I called him the other week. I said, you doing all right? He was like, I'm, I'm living a little rough. And I'm like, all right, man. I was like, uh, you get high yet? He was like, not yet. He, I was like, all right. I was like, if you need anything, man, call me or text me. And, you know, I've been calling and texting him. and he just Keep doing that, bro. Yeah, he won't. It, it sucks, man, because he was doing good. He got a few months under his belt. And it's like seeing that, man, it makes you want to cry, man, for real. It is sad, man. Yeah. It is sad. But then you have the other the other side of it where you do see people click. It clicks in their head. And they're just... You know, they're picking up they get it. years at a time. Yeah, and it, that's one of the most beautiful fucking things I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, man, to see them start raising their kids, spending time with yeah. their kids, to see pictures they put up on social media where they're happy. Yeah. Doing things, not looking bad. Yeah, they get put a little bit of weight on them, and mm-hmm. they're just living. 
Absolutely. Get a job. Hold That's a what job it's all down. about, ain't it, man? Yeah. Like, how much happier are you today now that you're not using? And you can fuck all that up with one one time. That's all it takes, isn't it? Yep. That's all it takes. Uh, I came home from prison and thought I knew it all, too, just like them guys you was talking about a minute ago. Oh, it's cool. I can hang out here. I can drink a beer. Yeah. I can do that. And <laughs> I was definitely around the wrong people, and it put me right back into that same hole. It wasn't until I separated myself and being around – you know, positive people that, that aren't doing that, man. And even now I find strength in being around people that do use. Yeah. Like I, I'm around people that's got Suboxone, that take methadone. Um, and I have no urge to ask for any of it. I yeah. want none of it. Don't want no parts of it. I feel good when I get up every day now. I'm not sick. And I enjoy that, right? Dude, that's the best feeling. Isn't ever. it, bro? Huh. I was just thinking about it yesterday morning when I got up and I was like, yo, I just, I can't believe I feel this good at 48 years old without any of that shit. You know what I mean? And and what could I have possibly felt like at 25? Yeah. If I wouldn't have in, been doing all this shit. Yes, bro. When my body was at its, you know, my hands hurt, my knees are fucked up. I'm old. I've been doing a lot of dumb shit. But uh, yeah, I don't want people to look back 25 years and, and wonder those things. You know, it's not worth it. It's not. I mean, I'm, I mean, in... I don't tell a lot of people this, man, but I'm everything that's happened in my life. I'm glad it happened. I'm glad I got addicted. I'm glad I've got locked up. I'm glad I, I you know, fucked people over. I got fucked over. I did. What I don't think it would make me the person I am today. Mm -hmm. Made you stronger. Oh, absolutely. Right. It, and it's it's like like I said, I'm a father, so it's like when my kids, I, I can see that I can see what's going on with my kids now. If like when they get older and they're going through shit like this, I can tell them. I can show them what happened to me. I can show them my mug shots and. Right. You know, show them the outcome. Show them what not to be. Yeah, and that's cool. But here's what I am today. Yep. Yeah, that's what's up. See, I missed a lot of my kids uh, because I was in all that while they were, I was in prison, I was in addiction. Uh, so, yeah, man, don't miss out on that. Yeah. Don't miss out on that part. You know, it's not worth it. Uh, I try to tell my other buddies, same thing I would tell you. Like, you got, how many kids you have? Uh, I got one of my own. My girlfriend has one, but she's basically mine. She's too. And, and then got two. I have one on the way. I got one due in June. Okay. Congratulations. Yeah. You know you. if it's a boy or a girl yet? Girl. Okay, so two girls. All girls. Okay. Including my girlfriends. It's it's three. Girls are super sweet. They're awesome. But yeah. Jesus, did you want to protect them? Yeah. Like you just want to, you don't want anything to happen. Your boy, you're kind of like, get out the door and learn. Yeah. But your little girl, you're not like that, man. Uh but yeah, uh, I always tell my buddy like when you when you see that number, that crack dealer, whatever it is, I, I like put your put your kid's picture there. Yeah, put your kid's picture there, and and and, and then put a note in there that says, you know, whatever, whatever, crack dealer, your son's gonna leave. So that way, when the yeah. phone comes up, that's what it tells you. This is a bad idea. This is not Billy the crack dealer. This is a bad idea. Yeah, right on your phone, right? I mean, I feel like we got to be preemptive dude i went through all the a lot of people like 99 percent of the people i used or, or dealt with i just blocked them yes delete them out my phone what do you, you almost have to don't you bro and then, then the one person i haven't i just kind of you know looked over because they didn't hit me up no more what do i have for them nothing nothing they weren't your friends in the first place nah y'all was just getting high together no. and if they are your friends and they get straight you'll come back around and y'all yeah. be good together there was like i don't know if you kind of see like a little ray of hope in some people when you're using you're like they could be good people one day it was just, they know what's up i want to be i want to lead by example by coming you know i moved away you know, an hour and a half away from home and uh people are like they didn't think i could do it Mm -hmm. You know, I was locked up with a guy, and this kind of one of the things that made me like, you know what, fuck this, because I was in in jail smoking K two every day. I was smoking Deuce, and like, he was like, when you get out, you're just gonna keep doing what you're fucking doing. He was like, you're just gonna be a piece of mm -hmm. shit. He was, I like you, mm -hmm. you're a good dude, but like, you're gonna keep doing this the same routine, and like that, right there, I was like, what the fuck? He's probably right. How old was this cat? Uh, he's my age, same age. Okay. Yeah. We knew who each other. wisdom. Yeah. Well, he's been to prison. Mm hmm Yeah. He's been to prison his whole life. You know, I kind of got a late start on the whole incarceration thing. That's good. Yeah. I was like 25 when I personally got, got arrested the first time. Well, yeah, that, that, that shit sunk in with you, huh? Made yeah. you change shit. Yeah. So, so you stopped smoking K2 in jail then? Stopped. I, I got, it was like two months I had 
I just stopped doing drugs. We were doing some boxing, K two, mm -hmm. drinking the hooch. Mm -hmm. You know how that is in the local uh, jail. Yep, Rockingham. Okay. I was down there, and then uh, I was like, "Fuck!" I was like, "I want to get out and go to a program," because I was trying to get my lawyer to get me into a program. Having all these possessions, I was like, "I need." I've never had any outlet other than jail and probation. That clearly isn't helping me. So, what am I going to do with this? Right. So I told my lawyer about that, and he was like, "That's a good idea." He's, like, "I can get you into something," and like they kept pitching me at like little rehabs here and there and like one was in my hometown it was the this little halfway house and i was like no nah, i can't do that i was i'd rather stay in jail i'm not going back for where i'm from so then they pitched me one here in winchester halfway house here and i went there and it was like you know i was sent you know, by an angel okay what, what which halfway house was this lord fairfax house okay and uh Dude, I, a lot of people go through there like, we hate this shit. I'm like, well, you must not hit your low point yet because mm -hmm. I was the the best thing ever. They keep your money for you. They let you work. They pay for all your stuff. And then when you leave, they give you a big check for all the money they saved up. You don't have to buy food. You don't have to buy nothing. You got to pay like your phone bill, mm -hmm. which they'll give you money for. And it's like they, they let you go to meetings, you know, you get to you get connect with people. And it's like, what, what more can you, you know, you, you want? Okay, so I've always thought that halfway houses are beneficial depending on the halfway house. Yeah, absolutely. Do you feel like if you would have came straight out of jail, what would you have done compared to what you would have done with the halfway house? Uh, I went back home. I would have, I would have went back to my parents, dead-end job, you know, like, and they, I wouldn't have been making no money. So what would I have been doing, really doing? Right, got right back into drug Got right back using. into it. I would have got bored. I, when I moved here, I put in the halfway house, I met people. Sober people. There's uh -huh. not a thing like they have like meetings down where I'm from. There's no treatment centers. There's nothing, man. And it's like Winchester's crazy. You like for the the whole recovery thing. It's it's like a lot of it. A lot of it's a, a lot whole of lot of for such yes. a small little area. We're close to Baltimore. Yeah, a lot of heroin addicts. A lot yeah, of, a lot of drugs. A lot of fentanyl addicts from Baltimore. And that's been that way for 20 that years. That in Virginia Beach. They got a lot of people from Virginia Beach. Yeah, I've never really noticed that. But I'm not really out there into it like yeah. that. As far as the meetings and things like that go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a big community. So how long was the halfway house? 90 days. Okay. That's I pretty, thought about that's getting an extension. Quick. Yes. Cause I did six months, bro. And it absolutely set me up for the street. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It was, it was nice, man. It was like, I've never had money saved up. Mm -hmm. They you know, helped me get an ID. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think when I got out, I had like four grand saved up. I bought a car. Yeah. Immediately bought like a $2,000 car or something. Yeah. I got a job. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, they helped me get a job. I actually got a job at Jiffy Lube. Yeah, insurance which sucked, but yeah, I I never had my own insurance. I mean, it was like like I said, man, with my parents and stuff, they kind of did everything for me. Uh huh. Got me insurance. Got me. So it comes back to uh, addicts have to learn how to live, right? Yeah, I had to learn okay. how to live, man. And it was like, and when I went there, man, it was like I had these guys in there. They were like hanging out with all the young cats that were relapsing, and just wanting to get by. And I did. I was like. I know what these guys know. I know how to get high. I know how to get drunk. I know how to relapse. Right. So I started hanging out with a bunch of old heads, like a, right. old, a bunch of old guys, man. And it was like, they took me under their wing. I got a sponsor. That wisdom, bro. That That's wisdom. That wisdom and experience. Yeah. Yeah, that means a lot. It does. You have to listen, though, right? Yep. Because you, you have don't to listen, listen. If they tell you it's hot and you go ahead and touch the burner, yeah, you get burnt. You're still getting burnt. You have to learn to listen. I was hard headed, man. The old man one time, he's like, if you want to go around here picking up dog turds your whole life, you're going to get shit all over your hands. And I'm like, okay. He was like, but if you want to go around here, you know, doing the right thing, he was like, the right things will be done for you. It was something like along those lines. I was like, huh. He's like, so don't, don't go around here picking up turds. You don't dropping want them jewels on yeah, you. Yeah. You know how the, right, some, he's dropping them the jewels, old guys bro. would always say some good shit. So like I got that. to uh, R and D when I first got to the penitentiary, but we're in R and D. And there's this old cat sitting there. And, of course, I strike up conversation. I think one of the first things I said was, uh, so how long you been in? And he said, I've been beating my dick in a sock for so long. I got a toenail growing out the end of my dick. <laughs> I was like, damn, that's a long time, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but it fucked me up because here I am, you know, a year in on a six-year bid. And there's this dude telling me some shit like that right off the top. But I'll never forget it. And I just thought that was a crazy statement from somebody. Like, it was a joke, but at the same time, it wasn't a joke. Yeah, you probably went back to your what, your cell or your bunk, and you're, like, really thinking about that. that yeah, day. yeah, well, I've thought about it ever since. I mean, I didn't even have a cell yet. They were actually assigning me my uh, place to live. I'd just come in. It's receiving and uh, departure. That's what R&D is in prison. But, yeah, that, that stuck with me. And there's a few things from other people like that that really stuck out to me, too. 
you know, like one guy, and I hated this dude, hated him. But he said, uh, he said, words are like bullets from a gun. Once you pull the trigger, you can't pull them back. Yeah. So me calling you a name or saying something, basically, it's I can't take it back. I it can't hurts. say I'm sorry for that shit. And that stuck with me too. And I hated that dude, man. So you can learn from people that you don't like, and you can learn. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of burnt. wisdom in the Department of Corrections. Absolutely. It is. It's. It's a lot of wisdom from ignorant people. And a lot of good people too. Yeah. Well, there's good people in there, and there's fucking shit bags. Yeah. Well, I mean, what and what it all stems down to is drugs and alcohol. Mm-hmm. Once Absolutely. The, they're good people, but once they get that in them, man, it's game over. Right. So you're doing good today, getting yeah. ready to have a kid. Right. You know, are you married? Uh, About to be. Okay. Engaged? Not yet. Okay. But got, you want to get married. Oh uh, yeah! Well, absolutely. Yeah, I got a, I got something in mind. Okay, that's what's up. Yeah, I don't want her to watch this and be like, "Oh, he's gonna propose oh, this day." Oh right, you know right. I mean? right. And we can take that part out if you want. Yeah. But yeah, moving forward, man, what do you do daily now to stay clean? Like, how do you uh, cope every day? Meetings every day. Okay. Every I mean, day. I, I, about five a week. I'm hitting about five a week right now. Mm-hmm. Um, Which meetings do you go to? A lot of I, I do a lot of AA. It's mm-hmm. weird. I never did big in alcohol, but mm-hmm. AA was my thing. Okay. And like, like I said, the wisdom, there's a lot of wisdom there. And it's all the same, man. It's like, it all comes down to like the basic, the basic principles of things. But a constant reminder of it. Yeah. That this is, yeah. this is the way I have to keep going. Yeah. Instead of getting me over there. Yeah. The recovery, man, now is like, my meeting stuff is like my job. If I don't, like, if I don't work, I'm going to lose, my family's not going to have a place to live. Same with I don't get in meetings. My family's not going to have a place to live. Hmm. I know I ain't, you know, I'll lose all my shit. My car will get repossessed or whatever it may be. And uh, so what you're saying is like your recovery is a priority. It's a priority. Just like money. I had like breathing and just like food. Yeah. Another jewel old man dropped on me. He said, you need to put as much effort into your recovery as you did getting high. Yes. I heard that one more than once. Oh, yeah. I was like, you're right. That one's the one that really made me think too, because I was like, nothing would ever stop me from getting high. Yeah. So why would I let anything stop me from being Dude, I've clean? walked in like two foot of snow before. Easily. Six miles down the road. Barefooted if yeah. I had to. Yeah, naked. I, you know, you Who don't cares? care. Yeah, man. So, yeah, you have to definitely put that that same amount of effort into being clean. Yeah. Your life's worth it, man. You know right. what I'm saying? Your kids are worth it. Your parents are worth it, man. You know, it's worth staying around. It's cool to have me able to, like, talk to my parents, like, I need something. They'll give it to me now. Mm-hmm. They're not hesitant. Mm-hmm. So you had to build trust back up. Yeah, I had, absolutely. I had to build trust back I up. Like I was locked up. Everybody. My parents came and visited me. My mom, my dad, kind of walked out the the little meeting room or whatever. And my mom's like, "If you, you're going to end up burying me if you ever get high again." She's, like, "I can't do this no more." And now being a parent, you can kind of put that into perspective yeah. a little bit, right? Yeah. Even though your kids are still young. You understand how much she cared for you yeah, and how much she doesn't want something to happen. I think that's one of the things that helped me make a turn around too, man, is I don't want, like my dad died about three years ago and our relationship was off and on, but at least he got to see me straight. Yeah. I'm glad he got to see me straight. Same you know with my mean? grandma. My, my dad worked on the road a lot as a kid when I was real young and uh, my grandma lived with us and she like helped raise me and mm-hmm. she, I got out and she, uh, she was like in a nursing home. Really, she was kind of coherent, but wasn't. I'd walk in there and she'd be like, DJ, you know, really, I'm glad she could see me finally, like where I, I was able mm-hmm. to come see her. And stuff. Yeah, man, that shit means something. It feels yeah. good too, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, to have people tell you, you know, you look good, you're doing good, proud of you, shit like that. You look Never, fat. That's what I got a lot. Right? I got out, I was fat as hell. <laughs> yeah, at <laughs> jail, do that. Yeah. That old starchy food. Uh, so, what's like, if you had to say, you know, what is your message? To people what do you want people to know if you could talk to them right now what would you tell them basically get your head out your ass you know stop doing what you've been doing you've been doing it your whole life there's no point to do it anymore if you can't figure it out help get other people that can figure it out mm-hmm. you know you're not going to go to the the mechanic and tell them how to, to fix your car he's a professional he knows what he's doing you know what i'm saying right yeah but get some help from somebody that's been there yeah take suggestions man don't be afraid to ask right Yes. Don't be that guy that say, thinks he's always got it. Yeah, because most likely you don't ever have it. And then, like, your social media and stuff, you reached out on Instagram, so you got Instagram, right? Yeah. Is that where people can find you? Yep, DJ Southerly on Instagram. Okay. Uh, and then that's where you promote your wrestling, right? My wrestling. <laughs> okay, let's get into that. Man, that took a look. I got, I got into wrestling 
right before I got locked up, right before I got heavy, heavy into opiates. Mm-hmm. A bunch of dudes where I'm from, we all we were like wrestling growing up, so we started wrestling, and uh, I ended up robbing one of the guys. Like, I stole some stupid shit out of his house, like a, a TV stand or something. And fell off, and I, all of them hated me, man. I understand why, man. They didn't want me to around. Why would they want me around if I'm stealing off of them? And stuff? Right. So, uh, I got locked up, and I got out, and I didn't reach out to none of them for a while. And I guess they seen I was doing the right thing. And one of them started. The guy actually stole off. Of, reached out to me, and he was like, "I'm glad to see you're doing well, man." And I was like, "You're my best friend. I, I didn't want to like see you die." He was like, "That's kind of one of the biggest reasons I kind of like, separated myself. I was afraid to get a call saying you're dead." I was like, shit. I didn't really, th- I thought well, you were just kind of mad because I stole off of you, but it was he just said he didn't want to see me die. So we got, I got into that and uh, like, I went to a couple of their events they were doing. I was like, man, I missed this, you know. When we started, it was just like a few fans would show up. Now it's like a couple hundred people are showing up at a time. And uh, I'm like, man, I miss this. I need something. I'm missing something in my life right now. I'm just like getting out of my comfort zone and coming out here and wrestling. So what's your wrestling name? Dude, it's the funniest thing ever. It's Roman Five O. It's a. Uh, I'm like a dirty cop. I come okay. out dressed up like a cop. Talk about I wanted to arrest all the white trash people for whatever it may be. Dude, it's the most hilarious thing ever. People are like, why'd you pick that? If you hate cops, so that's kind of the reason why I want to come out there and look like an idiot. You right, know? so you can talk shit. Everybody wants to see a cop get beat up. I'm sorry to say that. Like, there's good cops out there. There ain't bad. You know, some of them are good Not guys. All of them are shit bags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like in de- today's community. People like to see cops get beat up. It's like I've been beaten up like by a girl, <laughs> by like just fat hillbilly guys. It's uh-huh. people like that. You know, you come out like I'm doing a show in Richmond, man. I like doing the shows up there because like it's like a little bit of different setting. They haven't seen me wrestle much. And uh I'll go out there and like they fucking eat it up. Screaming and yelling and yeah, throwing it. trash at me, like all right. kinds of stuff. Oh, because you're a cop. Yeah, that's all awesome. Though. It's cop. working. Your character's but working. It, yeah, absolutely. It's like uh, I tell people, it's like Bat, the Batman and Joker. Man, if you just had all a bunch of Batmans, nobody would. Who would be fight? Right, you, know, you gotta you, have good and bad. Yeah, you it's gotta wrestling. have the good and bad. People so, like, is there any place online people can find this stuff? Uh, God, I mean, we got a YouTube, purewrestling dot com. PORstunts.com. Uh, That's P-O-R stunts.com. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fucking bug trying to get in my face. You got a lot of stuff on there, but a lot of it's on like IWTV where you got to pay to watch. Okay. Yeah. So when you're at these events and stuff, someone is filming though. Uh, it's not just a YouTube channel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a big community of it. It's not like regular WWE wrestling. Uh huh. This is like, they call it deathmatch wrestling. So it's like some pretty intense stuff. A lot of glass, a lot of, Thumbtacks, okay. fire. So you get into all that, you're getting slammed on glass and thumbtacks yeah, hitting yeah. the head with chairs. Yeah, like getting bleeding like, literally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's blood. People are like, it's fake blood. I'm like, nah. It's not. It's it's real blood. Right. But it's like that's that entertainment right there, getting out of the comfort zone. Because I get so nervous when I go out there. But when I say I get out in front of the crowd, it's like riding a bike. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, it's like the character kicks in. Yeah. You're ready to go. And uh the, the Past years since I've got in back into it, I just it was kind of like I was gonna do local shows, but man, they like that that character. They like that cop character. So like I've been getting a lot of bookings and like I got one coming up in Philly next week. Then after that, I got one in Richmond, and then I have one two weeks after that in New Jersey, and then I have another one a week after that down near Harrisonburg. So, it's so like, you're driving up and down the yeah. East Coast here doing yeah. wrestling shows for now. That's what's I've up. got I got booked out in Michigan, man, and that show ended up getting canceled. The sponsors canceled right on that show. Oh, that sucks. So I was gonna go out there, but uh it's cool. It's like it's different, you know. Something it's a, to get into, right? Yeah. It keeps you busy it's on top of everything else. Piece. It's cool because I went to a show last month, my buddy was wrestling at. And like I didn't think that you know people really would pick up the they're like, oh the we know who this guy is, but I'm going to these shows and these guys are like, yo, Roman, what's up, man? And I'm like, damn, they really do know me. Oh no shit, that's what's up, man. Yeah. Fuck yeah. So I, I just Have thought, you ever thought about having somebody film a few of those things so you can put it on your Instagram? I got some. I got Do that, bro. Yeah. Get some people to film some of that shit and just put you some short clips on Instagram. When I first came uh when I first started wrestling, I kept it away from Winchester. I didn't want people to know about it. Why? I thought that people were gonna be like, you dumbass. Like, but dude, the people love it. Right. Like it's interesting. It's yeah. who does that? 
Yeah, it's like it's probably like like I'm a tattoo artist. People are always ask me about that. I feel like this is something you probably get approached about more uh, often yeah. if people knew it about you. They right? love it, man. Yeah, like that's weird. It's just it's I feel different. like when I tell people at first, they think I'm lying. Oh, like well, you're a professor. Yeah, right. Well, then, I don't really know. I mean, you're not a big guy. You don't look yeah. like crazy intimidating or nothing, but that yeah. doesn't mean anything, does it? No. Like, I've seen plenty of different people wrestling. I used to love it, WWE and WWF, back at Stone Cold, Steve Austin. Oh, that was the best. Time. That was when it was the best. Yeah. yeah you know, like Mick it, Foley and stuff like yes, that. Yes, that's when it was the best. That's who got me into it, is Mick Foley. Like, no shit. Yeah. He, like, yeah, yeah. he would have just seen him. What was his character's name? Mankind. Yes. He was like a fat dude out of shape. Never went to the gym, but he was out there whipping ass. he took ass. a beat. Man. Dude, that's what it's, yeah. He took a beat. He was like, tooth would come out of his nose and stuff. Yeah, yeah, he was a fucking trip, man. I remember old Mick Foley. So that's awesome, man. Like, how does, how does that work with your health, though? Because I feel like. I've never been hurt. Okay. Never. So even after a wrestling match, banging and banging and slamming all around, you're you, not you sore have, and like, fucked up? You have, like, gig marks, which is like. Like you'll take like the shish kebab skewers, like the little uh, the little sticks. I've had this stuck in my forehead before, and you gotta take them out. Uh-huh. I've had glass in my hand uh, that didn't come out for like two months, and I finally got it out. But other than that, I've never been hurt. I've seen people get fucked up pretty bad. Right. What was the worst thing you seen? Uh, my one buddy jumped off a balcony, landed on his ass, and and crushed his spine. Oh. Yeah. Crushed uh, it. I mean, I he just that. his whole vertebrae crushed. I had to take him to the hospital. That night we were in New Jersey, man. It sucked. I had to. We had to leave him up there. We were like, "Well, you're gonna be in here for a few weeks, so we gotta right. go back home, man." He said, "That's fun." Yeah, yeah. It He's sucks, he, six months later up walking around wrestling again. No shit. Yeah. And you find a passion for something like that, man. You know. Yeah. He has rods in his back. He's like, "I don't. I'm, I'll never stop." I don't care. I love this shit. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. Yeah, man. Anything else you want to drop on us before we take off, man? Before we skid out of here? I think I'm good. I feel like this was a good pod, man. I'm glad you reached out, bro. Thank you. I'm glad you reached out. I'm glad, I, I, I'm out. glad you're doing well, man. That's a, that's a big appreciate thing. Appreciate it. I like what you're doing. I appreciate you. Absolutely. I think this is a this is cool for me. I enjoy sitting there talking. I, yeah. I, I find different people and you know wrestlers and <laughs> shit like that. It's a first. Time. Yeah. So that'd be awesome, though. Yeah, man. I fucking like it. I like it for the the way this will all come. Maybe send me a picture or something of you in a wrestling outfit or something. I got I'll put you. It I'll, in the I'll send you some when I leave here. I'll put that shit in the thumbnail, bro. Yeah. I'll make it dope as fuck. Yeah, I got you. So drop a like, drop a comment, man. If you got any questions for DJ, hit him up. Go follow him on Instagram, man. It's DJ Southerly, just like it is in the title. And uh, we'll Facebook. see y'all for the next one. Or Facebook, too. Yeah, so your Instagram Facebook. is tied to your Facebook? Yeah, they're all tied together. Right. So, yeah, DJ Southerly. And same way I'll spell it in the title, man. Go check him out and get some videos up, man. Get some wrestling videos up. Give these people something to go in there and check out, man. That'd be cool. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, reach out and let him know, man. Let him know what y'all think about his story. Drop a comment. And he'll be checking those out too, man. And uh, we'll see y'all for the next one. I appreciate it. Sweet. That's what's up, man. That was good. Good deal.